All right, and we're live. And uh, I was planning on giving you guys a peek at the latest from Paradox here, which was uh, it's going to be a international marketplace that they're going to be adding to Hearts of Iron 4. Uh, by looking through the forums this morning, it looks like uh, the dev team also dropped a new war effort initiative patch here. 1.12.13, Operation Alpha. So good morning, all. It's uh, 6 a.m. here in the States. Sorry for being a little late, uh, but I was just looking at this real quick. Uh, so it says, Generals, it's time for the final patch of this war effort initiative cycle. This patch contains a host of balance changes and fixes, as well as language localizations for simplified Chinese. We're going to be winding down the initiative for the time being as we move on to other lines of development. Furthermore, stay tuned for another message from us later pertaining to some feature content that we are working on. Okay, so here's the Operation Alpha patch notes, and uh, we'll go through this. This one's pretty short. Added simplified Chinese language support. Okay, we saw that. Balance. Lord Halifax now has two leader traits and reduces the requirements for with the British Raj when forming the Imperial Federation Commonwealth of Nations. It reduces the requirements with the British Raj. Okay, so it'll be easier to form the Federation slash Commonwealth Nations. All right. If Lord Halifax is used to annex the British Raj as part of the Imperial Federation, India will suffer increased resistance. So this is alluding to uh, UK. And when you play UK, you can form the Commonwealth Nations and form the Empire. I have a video on that on my YouTube channel. Uh, so it looks like there's going to be it's going to be easier to form. But if you fail at forming it, there's going to be more resistance. So a sideways balance there, horizontal balance, fixed non MTG ships having incorrect base speeds. Morning uh, out of ideas. Increased biggest speed and agility factor differential by 1.0, increasing the maximum effect of these stats on air combat. Fixed non-MTG ships having incorrect base speeds. I wasn't aware that that was a problem. Non-MTG, non-man the gunships. I wonder what that would be. Maybe you guys could tell me in chat what a non-MTG ship is. Increase the biggest speed and agility factor differential by one. Increasing the maximum effects on, of these stats on air combat. So speed and agility factor. Agility is the two hit roll. Speed typically modifies agility. So maybe agility is going to be a much bigger stat again. Maybe that'll take over defense as the, ma the main stat. If you're able to get your planes in the sky and if they can hit more effectively, perhaps that would be the way to go now. I'll have to test that out. So this looks like it's a big uh, balance to the air combat. So we'll have to see more on that later. UI available medals are now pre present on army screens for divisional commanders. Oh, cool. So the medals actually show up on the picture, I'm assuming. Added a new Hearts of Iron 4 YouTube channel link to menus. And just a preview, if you guys are here on the live stream, there's going to be a new trailer coming out tomorrow. I will try to uh, do a react video to that when that comes out. But that'll be on the Hearts of Iron 4 YouTube channel. Uh, modding added effective remove civil war target. Bug fix. Fixed an issue in the pressure government event chain for Italy and the Soviets in which the feedback event communicating the target's choice was sent to the target instead of the sender. Okay, not sure what that means. 
Playing as a released country is now persistent over saves in Iron Man. So there must have been some sort of bug when you uh, switch countries. So you can release a country and then switch to them and play as them. So there must have been some sort of problem with that. Observers now retain the observed country on hot join and resync. Hey, that must have been a problem in multiplayer. I never had observers in multiplayer though before, but that might be more of like a casting thing. Perhaps the Speed 5 team who's doing a uh, competitive multiplayer uh, asked for that. It might have been a problem during casting. Fixed license production access now not being restored when reload, reloading a save file. License production access. Okay. Democratic Italy can now send volunteers to Spain after completing the aid for Spanish Republic focuses. Fix for Belgium Congo, sometimes flipping to Germany after Belgium capitulates. I think I've had that happen to me before. Yeah, I definitely had this one happen to me before. That, that one kind of weirded me out. You'd see the Congo was yours after you took Belgium. Okay, introducing the latest edition of the war effort map. We're thrilling. We're where a thrilling challenge awaits. Take a look and observe only one stop remains. Are you up for the task of unraveling its mystery? Keep in mind, appearances can be deceiving. Oh, gosh. So, source. There's a hot fix. Saber. Hike. Cockpit. Alpha. So this one was Operation Alpha. That's it for us today. As always, we appreciate all your feedback. If you encounter any bugs, make sure to create a bug report and join Discord. This is the cool thing about the 24 dev team. They like to leak all this stuff, but I don't think there's any way I'm going to be able to figure this out. This has STE in it. And then a P, Operation Pact of Steel, maybe? Operation Steel Pact. So, is that going to fix the Axis? The Pact of Steel was between the Axis and the Germany and Italy in World War II. So, is this going to fix something about how they're making alliances in hearts of iron 4 that's how i would think about it and they're dropping all of these new features that are going to make the game more interactive in between players so what we're about to get into here is going to be the marketplace and this is going to be super exciting because we're going to talk about uh, how you could trade guns and resources across countries so perhaps it'll be the pact of steel next um not sure, but let's head over to that. So I didn't see this up as of yet, but the embargo should be off for this content. So we're going to delve into this. And uh, this is what I really wanted to stream today. The patch notes I just saw that were up, uh, but that looked like it was a pretty good uh, little patch notes there. A lot of good changes to the game. Now let's get into this international market dev corner. And after reading through this, this is going to make the game more like Monopoly. If you've ever played Monopoly the real way where you uh, can trade for properties and things like that. Uh, now you're going to be able to trade uh, military equipment in game. So this is going to be pretty exciting. And uh, I'll go through the whole thing. They're also going to give us an update at the end of this for the MIOs. So that was the Miss Military Industrial Organizations. Uh, they delineate that a little bit further. I'm not quite sure if I understand exactly uh, the changes that they're they're making, but I'll try to figure them out for you guys. Okay, Developer Corner International Market. 
Hello there, it's me, Korax, back for another Dev Corner, and some of you may have noticed in our last Dev Corner, I mentioned in the MIO goal, we wanted to have MIOs provide a framework for national specialism that can be used on the world stage. Well, I'm here to show you that stage and introduce international markets. Okay, so that makes sense. So you make an MIO, other countries around the world uh, through focus trees, etc., can have access to that MIO a lot of the Balkan states like uh, Bulgaria can get MIOs from other countries such as Germany. So that makes sense. This is all super work in progress. You're going to see a work in progress. Mockups and some details are still being finalized. Feature intent and goals. Introduce a place for nations to buy and sell equipment, benefiting both nations with a reward, creating a new way for countries to contribute specialist equipment to other nations. Be able to source equipment from other nations as needed. For majors to set the global standard for commonplace equipment, leveraging their superior economic might. Okay. So then other countries can use the MIO and then sell that equipment on the, the marketplace, perhaps the superior equipment. The international market acts as a one-stop shop for all your equipment needs from other countries. It's intended to be an international storefront with multiple sellers being able to sell the same thing from the same storefront. This means that you provided, that provided you have the appropriate market access, you can go into the international market and buy tanks from the USA and planes from Germany in one interface, but not one buy order. Okay, so you can create multiple buy orders. The flow. So to start us on how to get the market, we'll be replacing the diplomacy menu with the market UI. The diplomacy window was one of the least used parts of the UI, and so we want to replace it with something that will get more use. Oh, bravo, okay. So this is now gonna be the marketplace and they're gonna take out diplomacy. Like on all my tutorial guides, I was like, ignore this screen. It is completely useless. Wow, that is great. The, dip the diplomacy menu is now accessed from within the market menu at the bottom of the market window. You can also still right click on a country on the map to open diplomacy with them directly. So here it is, the international market. Allocated. Okay, so you could trade for convoys and it looks like sieves. CIC bank, and then there's a bank of sieves. Buy equipment, sell equipment, and then there's a filtering. So you can put things up here and sell them. This reminds me of Escape from Tarkov, where you can Escape from Tarkov is a first person shooter that's a looter shooter. You loot things, and then there's an online marketplace to where you can put whatever you looted in raid on the marketplace and sell it. This reminds me a lot of that. Uh, that is a great feature of that game. I'm glad that they're bringing it over to Hearts of Iron 4. Open Diplo UI, okay. So obviously it's not gonna look like this. This is just placeholders. Uh, the artist is gonna have to make this look nice. From here, we can start buying equipment or selling equipment by clicking on the respective button. Beyond that, any currently active contract with other countries will be displayed here, so you can easily see their current status. Okay, so there's values here. It looks like you can buy and sell whatever you want. And then this button is for upgrades. So I wonder if you click here, it shows you like equipment that's better than what you currently have. Before you can buy equipment, you need to request for market access from another country in the diplomatic UI. Okay, so you're gonna have to have good relations with countries in order to get access to their marketplace. Being in the same faction with someone gives you market access too. Okay, very intuitive system, makes sense. Hey, Nicholas. Dude, it's pretty cold. It's uh, it's 6.20 in the morning here. Amazing Grudiger. Thanks for coming to the live stream, by the way. Yeah, this is... Uh, 
So after I talked with Peter, he said that I might be able to figure out what he was going to do next from our podcast. You can check that out under the podcast section on my channel. I don't think that I could have figured out that this is what they were going to go for. He told me off the podcast that he was going to fix the Hoi for economy. And this is all economic based for sure. And the MIOs are econ economic based as well. But this blows away my expectations. I thought he was talking about a rework. This is not a rework. This is like adding game features. So, wow, this is blowing me away. Good job, Peter. Okay, international market, add equipment to the market. So we kind of already saw that. As you can see, we don't currently have access to anyone's market. So let's look at how we can fix that market access. For market access, we need to go to the, diploma, the diplomacy menu for a country where we will find the negotiate market access diplo action. This is what we want in order to send a request. For nations with factions or puppets, this market access is given implicitly. This is important since in many cases you don't want the, those pesky enemies seeing or trying to buy all the amazing equipment you are selling. This is especially important to stop them seeing your latest equipment stats and MIO modifiers. With this, only the people you want to see and buy your wares are able to. Okay, so this makes sense from an espionage standpoint. So Germany might not want to trade with UK, for instance, in the early game because the UK is going to be able to see what you're building or I guess whatever you're building is going to be displayed on the marketplace. Maybe that's what they mean. So another country will be able to see all your production lines. I'm not sure. Negotiate market access. Market access would allow us to buy equipment from each. Hey, Stefan, what's up, brother? Stefan is my editor, and he's doing a great job. Okay, so now we've got market access, and we can start buying and selling equipment. Since we have access to a market, the buy screen will now show the equipment they have put up for sale all right so you have these placeholders there's a gun there's an artillery there's a plane it tells you what missions they can run that's very important because without knowing the individual stats how do you know what mission they can run if you don't know what modules are on the plane so it looks like that's the workaround for that. I'm not sure if this is going to be calculated in IC. It's probably going to be an IC. And then there's convoys here too. So perhaps there's a trade that you could do with convoys or sieves or IC. I'm not sure. And then this is a quantity. The house symbol is typically the quantity. And this, these are hands shaking, so maybe this is a bid. Let's buy some rifles. To do this, we click on the rifle equipment from here. We choose how many rifles we want and how fast we want to pay for them, and thus receive them. The price per rifle is decided by an IC to CIC conversion rate. This gives you all the information you need, like total cost, convoys needed, and how long it will take to pay deliver the equipment. IC is... Production cost. I'm not sure what CIC is. Industrial credits. I'm not sure what CIC is. Maybe someone in chat can help me out. Okay, so screens here. So you get to pick how many you trade. And then it looks like it's going to be a set production cost. So there's not going to be any uh, cheesing there. I'm sure there will be bugs with this in exploits, but they'll probably be fixed as soon as Feedback Gaming tells them to the, makes a video on it rather. <laughs> okay, factories max. Okay, so here's where you give the factories CIC cost. So perhaps that means a civil, uh, how much IC one civilian 
factory will produce over time. I'm not sure. We send a request and the seller has agreed to the contract. Okay. The contract will now appear in our market window as an ongoing contract. It will show all the information you need to know about each contract you have ongoing. So I'm assuming that you can cancel the contract. Yeah, here's the button right here. Uh, if you need the sieves back for whatever reason, you need to do spy missions. You need to license produce something. So this is interesting because it adds another dimension because another nation is producing this equipment and then you're receiving it instead of license production, which essentially is I get the specs for the equipment and then my country produces it itself. So both of these happen during the war, so it makes sense. Selling. Now let's look at how we sell our equipment on the market. To start off, we need to add equipment to the market. We do this by first click clicking sell equipment and then clicking the add to market bucket buttons. From here, we can add our equipment from the stockpile to the market. We can choose here how many of every variant we have we have we wish to put up for sale. Okay. So now we have to put up some equipment on the market and it appears in the list. The list shows all of our equipment on the market, but not currently sold on the market. Okay. Right on time, we got a request to buy some of our equipment. This menu will show you what they are buying, how fast they are paying, and how many the resultant deliveries there will be. We'll accept this request. We have accepted the purchase request, and now we can see the selling entry in our master list of contracts along with all the information around that contract. Okay, very good. So that brings us to the end of our quick journey through the international market, and we brushed over a lot of details. So that what the next part of the part will focus on. Technical details, market access. Market access uh, is a diplo action to request access to a market, to offer access to your market. Thus, it is a bilateral relationship. Faction members share market access as do puppets and overlords. Market access blockers. Okay, this is what I'm interested in. Because at certain points, it's not really going to make sense. Like, so Germany sent guns to Ethiopia, but then Ethiopia eventually becomes part of the allies, for instance. So at a certain point, it seems like Ethiopia would not buy guns from Germany. If you know what I mean. Oh, thanks you, thank you, Roller. CIC means construction industrial capacity. I'm trying to think about what that is construction industrial capacity like sieves. Oh, okay. So what they mean is you can't give more sieves than what you have. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how that conversion is going to work. I'd have to see it working in game but thank you for the answer oh maybe that is the di a different stefan stefan are you my editor stefan contracts purchasing equipment costs cic we use a conversion ratio to convert IC value to CIC value. A contract has two main variables, CIC cost from equipment and sieve factory allocation for payment. So they take sieves for, from you, and then the cost is gonna be a set cost. So if I gave a thousand guns, depending on the gun variant, I'm assuming there would be a set number of sieves. <laughs> okay, Stefan. Sorry, brother. <laughs> so with this information, we can talk about how a contract is structured. Okay, the CIC costs, convoys, equipment number, civilian factory allocation, CIC cost. 
deliveries convoys. So perhaps how many factories you're willing to put up and how much equipment the other country is willing to sell you. And then between those two things, that's how much equipment you get? Not sure. A contract is broken down into payments every 30 days. So every 30 days, you'll make a payment and receive equipment. The amount of equipment to be delivered is based on the payment rate of the buyer. So the more sieves you assign to a contract, the more equipment you can receive per delivery. Okay. Selling. We have a new stockpile called the market stockpile. Equipment can be moved from the normal stockpile to the market stockpile. Equipment in the market stockpile can be requested for purchase by any nation we share market access with. Okay, so it actually flows out of your stockpile, it looks like. So that separates it from being used twice, I would assume. The thing that I would think of first is like Germany's biplanes. Germany might want to get rid of those so that like Spain can buy them off the market from them. That would be a cool little thing in the Spanish Civil War. Payment. So payment is handled via a new construction entry for contracts. When you start a contract, a new entry will be created in the construction menu for the number of factories you agreed to pay with and for the total CIC of the contract. This construction task has priority over normal construction. Okay, so there's gonna be a new construction line for a contract under your construction menu. And then instead of just giving the sieves away, it'll actually be, I'm assuming there'll be a, a completion bar that you'll be able to see for the contract. That's gonna be interesting. Contract storage. CIC payment and equipment before being delivered is stored in a contract storage. At the end of the month, the minimum payment delivery is transferred to each country from the contract storage. CIC is delivered to the bank while equipment is delivered to the equipment stockpile. The bank. So they're making like an international bank. The bank is a special container for CIC. You receive from other countries as payment for a contract. It is used in construction by providing bonus CIC to your construction entries. Here's a flow chart to show you how a contract payment works and then how the, CI the bank CIC is used in construction. Deal, 100 rifles, max one sieve, 200 CIC. So this is, you're gonna allocate one sieve to produce 200 CIC, which is industrial credits over time is the way I'm gonna think about it until you guys correct me in chat. Construction, 200 CIC. So if you allocated more sieves, perhaps this would be completed faster. Payment, five CIC a day. Okay, that one sieve is gonna create one, five CIC every day. Magic box, 150 CIC a month. This goes to the bank. Bank is boosted. Construction CIC 50%. I'm not sure I understand this. Production 75 rifles a month. Buyer 75 rifles a month. So this would take a month and a quarter a month and a third to produce all the rifles for the contract using one sieve. Okay, I'm not sure about the whole mathy thing to see if this makes sense, but I kind of understand the concept. Cancellation, either side can request to cancel the contract and any time no more deliveries are made and all payment to this contract storage is returned to their originator. Things that are not, not part of this feature. Trading ships, money, supply, demand, pricing. Money. So there's no monetary system. There's no ship trading. There's no supply and demand pricing. So the, the price is going to be set. So this is not that dynamic because I feel like if it was, if you could do these three things, there would be ways of exploiting it. So that kind of makes sense. Things that we were looking into. 
Limited cost of equipment changes. Some active choices, some passive. So perhaps you could get a deal on trading with certain faction members that perhaps they've chosen certain focus tree badges or something like this. This could be incredibly complex. Uh, the market system, I think they just need to make it as vanilla as possible uh, when it first comes out because people like our friend Dankus will exploit the heck out of this, which is actually healthy for the community because then it can be fixed. But yeah, definitely guys like Dankus will put this to the test and see if there's any cheese behind it. Um, I think that they should limit this at first. Uh, but again, they're coming out with a lot of new features. Um, so we'll see how they pull this off and if they can execute this well. Hey, Gary. True, Gary. I guess the only downside is the smaller countries don't have a lot of sieves, but say they wanted to cheese the game and go early war, they could get some guns from Germany and then be able to go to war quicker um, with more quality equipment. Or perhaps, yeah, just get obsolete equipment for cheap. Either or. Okay, let's, let's check out the MIO addendum here. The last dev corner I spoke about MIOs, I did my best to explain and answer questions, but I want to add an addendum to the previous dev corner to show some things that should hopefully make some things much clearer. Okay, hopefully I can follow here. I kind of looked through this and uh, I'm going to do my best. But basically, as we said earlier, the MIOs are going to be perhaps used by other countries as well. So you could make an MIO that one of your allies could use on their equipment, say like a gun designer, for instance. So let's get into this part. It seems there has there was some confusion that MIOs were a totally free form design your own company system. This isn't what was intended to be conveyed. MIOs have predetermined pre predetermined choices which are designed to offer compromise and strategic strategic choice. So let's talk about what an MIO looks like in terms of a real MIO I get access to for a country. So I didn't think it was going to be like a free for all. Definitely, there's going to be a lot of nuance and balance when they make this system. I'm going to show some numbers here, but these are just starting values for initial implementation. And so don't read into the modifiers or values too much yet. So here we have a generic infantry MIO. So at the top, we have design teams. Infantry Offense Department, Infantry Quality Department, Support Equipment Department, Industrial Manufacturers. So within these subsets of the MIO, there's if then, like there's choices that are discrete. So you can only choose like one of these three, it looks like. Piercing, Heart Attack, Soft Attack, Breakthrough, Defense, Production, so you can only choose one. If it was a tank, I'd probably choose soft attack for AI games. Breakthrough would be nice to defend the tanks on the offense. Production cost sub... So this would... Production cost sub branch. So this would decrease the production cost of some support equipment. So I'm assuming that one MIO could do all of these things if you had enough credits to choose all these things. So you're just going to have to choose what to do first and then what to do at all because you probably won't have enough XP to spend on all this. I think if this is an infantry MIO, you're spending army XP for this. So a lot of late game potential here as well. So the definition for this MIO is 
Design teams, Red Arrow show mutually exclusive. Infantry offense department. Okay, so this is magnified. So it looks like you level up piercing. Dude, they're going to have to be careful with this. If you start stacking soft attack, oh boy. This could be the best branch in the game right here. Infantry quality. So they're leveling up defense, breakthrough. Now I'm assuming this is going to be hard to upgrade because it's going to take a lot of XP. Support equipment de department lowers cost. And they said the values are going to be changed, so don't worry about this. These do seem like they're pretty high values. Like, in the soft attack branch here, we got one, two, three, four, five. So that's going to be 17% total. A 17% boost to soft attack, if you just focused on this, would absolutely break the game. But like I said, these values are a work in progress. Industrial manufacturers. Okay. As you can see, this focuses almost exclusively on improving infantry equipment with small bonuses for support equipment. Generic MIOs are generally focused on one specific equipment, providing departments that are generally focused around offense, defense, and quality, re quality reliability. So I'm assuming that there's going to be Tank MIO, um, plane, infantry equipment, and ship MIO. So there's four. Oh, there's also industry, though. So five. I'm assuming there's going to be five MIOs. We'll have to see. But it looks like within each MIO, you could do a lot of different uh, tailoring to whatever your needs are. So that's kind of nice. Yeah, so here's... Medium tank, so it looks like they're going to keep Henschel. Porsche is the heavy tank for Germany. Generic capital ship MIO. So there will be a capital ship, a coastal raider, MIO, etc., etc. Still, it's just underneath that MIO. How can you tailor it? Um, I'm assuming there'll be an RD MIO specifically. We were looking at an infantry one above. So the arty one would obviously have bonuses to arty and soft attack. Generics can sometimes also have specializations for specific stats that are not normally in equipment specific ones. Also such as the aircraft range focus MIO. So be for like a USA or a Japan. People focus on range a lot. In certain situations, you can completely ignore range. Or Pacific Fleet MIO. Okay. I can't really see the uh, bonuses here, but yeah, as I said, underneath that one tree, there's going to be options with each of the typical designers, it looks like to me. Of course, these are generics, and that is why they are very simple. They are there to replace the current generic designer set already present, so every nation can enjoy some level of customization for their MIOs. More major countries might have specific MIOs that are unique to your country and thus offer very different choices to make. These are just some simple ones, but they can be much more branched choices with lots of content tie-ins. But we will show those in later dev diaries. So basically what I'm thinking though is He's saying they're generic. To me, this is pretty complex. And I think the best part about it is it could be changed over time. So you have Soviet Tula Arms Plant Tank Refurbishment MIO. There's an SBG department for all you SBG lovers, AT department. I hope that makes, I hope this makes what an MIO looks like as a structure. You play with clear, and again, I hope to see you in future Dev Corners. That's all I have for this week. As always, please ask questions and comment. I hope to see you in two weeks for the next Dev Corner, where Ario will introduce you to another feature coming to you in the future. So, the questions that I have that are raised by this. Will there be Focus Tree updates? Or will we simply get these game features? 
it does seem like a lot but if you remember with no step back they did completely rework the logistics system and you got a new soviet tree so what i'm thinking though is perhaps they start cherry picking like sweden or something like that sweden denmark focus trees and then um add in all these like big features i don't know to me they seem like a lot of big features and there's another one coming so you have the marketplace and you have the mios those are two features and there's going to be another one so ario is peter peter is i uh interviewed him on the podcast and he said he was reworking the whole economy system so i did ask him can he fix uh trade for multiplayer and it didn't look like that was coming because uh that would affect the base game as well so they weren't going to be able to do that so i don't think it's that maybe there will be a fix to trading resources so you heard it here next that is going to be my guess my guess is the next thing that they're going to go for is how resources are traded in game how that plays out i have no idea it's probably something way different than that i'm just giving you my best guess and in terms of focus trees my guess is finland sweden norway denmark and uh you know you remove some of the generic focus trees from those countries um if they go for focus trees at all so we'll have to see okay i'm gonna read chat here Okay, Nicholas thinks there will be focus trees from countries. I'd like to see an improved focus tree for the majors minus Russia and Italy, as well as focus trees for Scandinavia, Belgium, Luxembourg, Austria, Ireland, and Albania. That's going to be a lot to ask for. I think they'll just focus on a region like they have in the past. Hey, fried soap. The country that has most historical relevance to this dev diary is probably Czechoslovakia. I agree, man. Yeah. Well, they did have Skoda Works, which was a huge producer of arms. I think it's still to this day. They make like modified AKs and things like that. I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> That's a lot, Striker. It would be cool. An Iranian focus tree. Thanks for coming to live stream, Jamie. Yeah, that Iranian, the Iran build that I did was, dude, that was pretty hard. <laughs> At least with the generic focus tree, you're not sitting there sifting through like what to do with the focus tree. It's kind of obvious with the generic one. You played it a million times. Just looking on the, the bright side of a generic focus tree, not that it's that spicy or entertaining, but <laughs> at least you know what you're getting. <laughs> a communist Germany? See, I have to disagree with you there. I didn't see, from what I've studied from history, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, there wasn't much of a communist party. And... Hitler eliminated the communists, didn't they? He had some communists leaning folks in his regime and he eliminated them pre-war, if I'm not mistaken. So that's going to be a hard one to kind of plan around. Maybe you're right, though. Maybe uh, you do communist, but the communists overthrow Hitler just like the Kaiser. Maybe that is a good idea. I'm going to backpedal on that. You had a ton of oil and couldn't get any wealth. That's what I'm saying, man. Jamie, so think about this. So I ran. Now there's going to be a marketplace for resources. And you could put those resources up on the marketplace just like you could guns or anything else. And now think of the possibilities that you could, that you could exploit as a miner. Having that Iranian gold that oil 
that you could trade on a marketplace. It would just be interesting who you'd be able to trade with. If he, if Iran goes fascist and joins the Axis and trades oil to Germany, you could get a lot of stuff. You could definitely boost your economy. Australia needs some updating. Okay, did you hear that, devs? John Curtin wasn't the prime minister in 1936. Who is the, the prime minister? Okay, if you're going to give a update like that, you have to complete it. You have to tell us the correct answer. Everything, you can't cherry pick here. You got to serve up the whole... If you want it to be patched or fixed, you got to serve up the whole tamale. True story, Jamie. <laughs> Crocodile Dundee. You goofer. All right, guys. Well, that's going to end it for this. I'm calling it a dev diary. Uh, Paradox is calling it a dev corner. And there was also a patch that came out today. So lots of stuff happening with Hearts of Iron 4. A lot more content to come. And uh, every time there's a new major update or a bug patch that looks like it would be good to share with you guys, I'm going to share it with you. Um, so, yeah. If you're following this live stream, check me out on YouTube. Uh, I got a lot of guides, a lot of I uh, just started a podcast with the likes of Bitter Steel, Dankus Mimicus, REO, one of the devs. I have podcasts on my channel, so go ahead and check that out. There's a podcast shelf now on YouTube, and it appears as a playlist. And uh, if you guys want more content, Go ahead and uh, become a channel member for a dollar a month. You'll have access to videos such as my thoughts on the war on Ukraine. And I also have started doing a fitness journey that I'm sharing with you guys all in the ice tub. So uh, thank you guys for showing up to the live stream today. I really appreciate it. Uh, and I will see you on the next one.